so it's 1201. Um, I personally don't like video. I hate seeing myself and hearing my voice. Um, so I would love to learn from all of you what you are doing um, to create co video content and how much um, success you're actually having from it. So if anyone wants to share, I know Chandra, you're fantastic when it comes down to your video um, videos that you post on social media. How comfortable are you with creating those videos? More comfortable now, still not fully comfortable, but the more you do it, the more comfortable you get. And I think that what's really important is to realize that you look exactly the same in person and you sound exactly the same in person. So you can't really be concerned about that, about not liking how you look or how you sound. Um, speaking of video, since COVID, everybody has seen my kids and met my kids. So yeah, that was Dominic and Elijah. Um, but yeah, you just have to do it. And I think the most important thing with video too is just being authentic. So I, it's annoying when my kids get in the videos, but it's also, very realistic. We are in <laughs> like a Donnie on his side. Like it's, this is life right now. Things look a lot different now than they did earlier this year. So I think that just being real, authentic, whether that's being live or I don't tend to go live on social media or things like that, which I think I should, but I like to do more um, content based videos or one on ones with like bomb bomb videos and things like that. But don't be concerned about how you look and sound. Like it's the exact same way in person. And, and do you use um, special software to create any of your video content? So I record on my phone yeah. and then I used to edit on iMovie. And then, um, but now I use um, Adobe Premiere Pro. So, but that's basically it one eight minute YouTube video taught me how to edit it. <laughs> and that's that. Um, but I don't do anything fancy. I don't have fancy equipment or anything like that. It wasn't even until a couple months ago that I even bought a ring light. You know, I used to just sit on my couch because I have a huge balcony and I would just sit on my couch and record from there because I had a lot of natural light. So it's, I don't put on a production. I'm not a you know, I'm not someone on TV or anything like that. I just want to be able to humanize some of the communication that I do via video. So I don't care if it looks perfect per se. Very nice. Um, and Anya, you also create video content, um, don't you? Uh, are you, uh, and you're definitely more comfortable in front of the camera than, than people like myself. So what, what are you currently using for your video content? You know, it's funny that you should say that, that I'm more comfortable than you because I often look at you and Chandra and I'm like, they're so comfortable. When I go to press the record button, I am typically most of the time like, okay, you know, like, and I just kind of do it. But I, I naturally have like that personality that I'm like, woo, you know? So I just kind of like use that to like help me out. Um, but as far as like the editing of the regular photos, I, I use um, my phone. But what I like to do with video more than anything, and, and also like on my social media pages, you'll notice that I do have some personal, some personal videos and some personal things. But I, I, I typically like to showcase properties. And I use this app called Mosho. Um, it's like $60 a year. And pretty much is, is the videos that I create all the, the YPN promos that I, that I send to you guys. And they have like, I don't know, like 40 different templates. There's also, uh, I have a, a GoPro and the GoPro, there's an app called Quick. And so a lot of times with my properties, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of like pick a template there. And then I like to write things like on the videos because I find that most people don't listen to it with sound when they're scrolling through social media, especially like late at night or if they're in an office or whatnot. So I like to, to have like words because people like to be inspired, you know, with, with cool phrases or, or whatnot. Um, but yeah, and then also my office, like before the whole COVID thing, we used to go to every month to a new development and then they used to fuse together, together videos. And so I've used a lot of those, um, but I'm not an expert at all. And like I said, I, I think like what, what Kevin said earlier, it really resonates with me is done is better than perfect. Christian. So sorry. Done is better than perfect, right? 
So it's kind of like, just do it. And then sometimes I'll go back and watch myself and I'm like, oh my God, you know? Like I'll send a promo video to YPN and they'll post it on the page and I'm like, that's what I sound like. But then like Chandra says, you sound like that. You look like that anyway. So just embrace it and just do it. I just never rewatch my videos, by the way. Uh, never. I just, I, like if I, once I'm done editing and I post or I, I send it to somebody, I email, that's it. I don't rewatch it. I can't stand it. <laughs> Like but you're so mom. comfortable. You're so smooth. In your videos, like, you're just like, like for me, I'm like, almost like overly animated. And you're just like, you know, I'm Chandra and I'm going to welcome you to the class and you're going to come because it's awesome. Yeah. Right? And I'm like, you're going to come to the class because it's going to be great, you know? And Peter, yeah, you too, exactly. you look pretty comfortable. Dope too. You know, and, and you guys the, are all comfortable. You guys all look comfortable. Thing is that you're you're absolutely right, Chandra. Is what everyone else is seeing is exactly who we are. Um, and so, for some of us that have, you know, that um, you know that that crazy um, thought process that you look and sound more uh, weird than you really do, um, is just in our own head. It's our own limiting belief. And you know, when you see people like the true experts with video content, Anthony and Melinda, you know, um, at the drop of the dime where all of a sudden they hit say, okay, we're gonna go live, you know, they hit and then boom, it's like lights, camera, action. Um, it is so flawless. And for me, I hope that at one point I will get to that um, level like Bethany Martinez as well. It, it's just so effortless. Um, so hopefully Melinda and Anthony will share their progression of you know, using video from when they started to where it is now, because I'm sure there's there's a major evolution. And do you watch your own video content? That's the number one question here. Do you watch yourself? I do. You do? <laughs> I do because you, I don't want to, and this is something that I actually wanted to bring up to the ones on the session with legal expertise, mm -hmm. which is, uh, what are some things that you may want to be cautious about, especially if you're sharing um to a greater extent on social media and things like that uh there's reason and the reasons i'm reasons for that question i cannot disclose them at this time because of how delicate it is but it's something that i think um i, I want to mention because it's, it's not something that i'm personally enjoying right now that i'm going through and um one of uh part of that comes from a video that was recorded during district four last year and where the situation came up was that somebody was essentially using some comments that were said during that session potentially against me so I, again i don't want to sound like a um i, I don't want to put a cloud on the videos i think they're great but i, I mean uh, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that, you know, what are some precautions that we may want to, it'd be nice to have a class about this too. Well, we have an attorney <laughs> raising their hand right now um, who's going to give us some pointers. So Melinda, take it away. Uh, I'll say this. There's a funny meme, meme about it that goes around every once in a while. I see it. It says, don't say anything or text anything or, you know, pretty much post text, email, whatever that you wouldn't want to be used against you in court. And there's a funnier way that they say it, but that really reigns true for everything. So uh, unfortunately, we do need to sometimes put a filter on that stuff. And depending on, you know, what you say, it can trigger different things. So um, be careful, you know, not to disclose someone's uh, identity if they don't want you to, uh, private details about a deal that, you know, or when you're talking about in a presentation format, you know, um, I know that there's, there's different regulations for all our businesses, but making sure that you, if you know, like for example, lawyers, we can never give guarantees, right? That's one thing that we can never do. I know, uh, Anthony, you know, in the loan, in the loan department, you, you can't probably do certain things, right. Or say certain things without it going through compliance. So depending on your area, I'm sure realtors too, you know, you gotta, you gotta watch, uh, even how you generalize or talk about a neighborhood or things like that. So there's a lot of different things that you got to be careful about. You just got to know, you know, know your own rules for your own profession um, a little bit more. Um, 
And, and that, that will be my tips, my quick tips. Real quickly, you know, I will say, Marcelo, you know, I'm more than happy to talk offline. I'm not an attorney here, um, but we do have a lot of connections through the Miami Association of well, Builders. Um, but I do want to hear from Anthony and Melinda, you know, when you first started, um, when you think back to where you first started to where you are now with all of your video content, um, what is the one thing that you're the most proud of? Let me elaborate on that one. Um, you know, what's funny is yesterday I created a video and it took me about 10 takes. Now my mind was not all there because I have a lot going on with, you know, the system and, and many deals we're blessed with, but <clears throat> everyone's human folks right now. We're all looking at each other and you're not going to get it the first time. I remember when I did this about two years ago video and I was just getting into video and I was really nervous. Uh, I've video recorded everything. All of my videos I watched, I critiqued, uh, and you have to listen to yourself, your tonality. Uh, it's just like lifting weights or running. And I always use the analogy with sports because it's team effort uh, and it's consistency and it's building your muscles and it's building that mindset. Uh, but to watch and to see us grow, that gentleman back over here, I don't know if Bob's available or if he's on there, that guy was like a deer in headlights, man. You guys should have saw him. He was like scared and it was hilarious. It was the funniest thing ever, but now he's smooth. He's amazing. He's closing loans, God bless him. And it's all because a year later from doing videos and really listening and listening to himself, that's what it's about. And it's not gonna happen overnight. Uh, but you really need to critique yourself. Peter's right. You should definitely um, listen and record and rewatch these videos. Uh, and it's the content. I know that uh, Rosella was talking about content and, and sending out different content. We don't really talk about the gray areas or the compliance of this business. We're talking about the real stuff uh, that's going through people uh, and really taking that and, and using it uh, to say, look, we can solve your problem. We, we understand your problem. Here's what we can do in that situation. We're not rapid fire rates and APRs and things, you know, you know, they can't do that, right? So how do you engage with them? That's our methodology of how we really uh, interact them. But guys, it's all about video content. It really is. And it's um, listening to yourself uh, doing the retakes. Bomb Bomb is an amazing, amazing app if you don't have it. Vidyard is another one. Uh, we use both of them together uh, and uh, it's amazing content and it allows you to really record and listen and post. Uh, and Melinda and I are constantly, constantly on a daily basis critiquing each other uh, and especially the marketing material that goes out. Thank you, Peter, for saying that, you know, it's streamlined and everything, but that, that comes with a lot of time and, and feedback from Melinda saying, no, it's not good here. It needs to be this and that and, and vice versa. And so you guys really need to understand that um, if you've got your brokers or your team leaders or any mentors in your life, use them, use the resources that, you know, you have. I'll, I'll give you my story on, on like, I, I think it starts with public speaking. And if you can put yourself out there and feel comfortable in front of a crowd or in front of a group of people and feel confident speaking, I think that's, that's the first step. That was my, that's where my journey started um, very early on in college. And I always put myself, I always put myself in that uncomfortable position to have to speak in front of a crowd, whether it was in law school or doing presentations or different I did a pageant in college like that. That's like, but that stupid thing that I did, okay, actually got me to feel that was like, if I could do that, like I would never make my kid do that, like thinking back. But if I, if I could do that, like I could do anything, you know? And so that's how it started. And it just builds. Um, I, I, I'm a one take wonder with videos. I very rarely will take, do a second take if I have to do something pre-recorded. I really don't like to uh, d like overkill it. As long as I don't stumble on my words, it's going out because it's usually never as good as the first round. I don't overcomplicate my videos. Uh, and I talk very like I'm doing now. I don't like try to be too formal or too uh, I almost conversational if, if I can. So that's my story. Um, I will say that at, at my, my social media video got better once I met Bethany <laughs> because I just like, man, she's awesome at this. Like, I'm just going to like emulate her. And obviously we talk about different things with different people. 
say we're recording right now and you're like wait what are we recording and then it just flows naturally for her yeah and it's just like documenting my day a little bit or just you know promoting my events and things and it, it actually um you know, find someone that, that you, you can vibe with and then just kind of go with it and kind of try to try to do that, you know, and, and find someone that you can um, also get tips from and feedback. But um, with like, I do, like Anthony and I were constantly like, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? What do you think about this? Um, but anyways, so yeah, that was my journey with it. And, and now it's kind of like something second nature. I don't really think about it anymore, but that wasn't like overnight either. So those public speaking classes in college obviously paid off, right? And the passion um, that, that you were a part of. I'm happy that you met, that you shared that with us because I won't forget. Now I'm going to be looking. For the- <laughs> you know, I'm going to. You won't find. I don't think you'll find them. It was like a long time ago. I'm not going to disclose which one. <laughs> so, Neil raised his hand, and I'm I'm happy that he raised his hand because I wanted to say one thing that he does very effectively is he will record, instead of sending me a text message, he will always record a message just to say, hey, Peter, just checking in on you. How are things going? Those to me are really powerful. Neil, I have them saved. Um, So if you're available um, to say something, please um, tell us a little bit about your journey with video. and Why did you get started with sending out those video messages um, to your audience? Because I'm sure I'm not the only one that's getting them, but they're really powerful. So, so really quickly, thank you, Peter. Um, what's up to, <clears throat> excuse me, to Melinda and to Anthony. I was just on with them. Uh, I think it was last week, this week. I don't know what day it is. Um, but, but really quickly, the, the reason why I started sending the video messages is because I didn't want to just be different. I wanted to do be better. Right. And how can, you know, we use what we know about people. Uh, Everyone else is sending, you know, text messages or or let's just say emails. First of all, Uh, we know a lot of the emails go into the trash, even if it is a video email. Uh, I look at the numbers. I'm a big nerd when it comes to numbers. I know that 98% of text messages get open or viewed within the first minute of receipt. Right. And so if I can get into your phone, wherever you are, even if you're in a meeting and you see a video from me, you're going to click and see what the video is. Right. And just hope that your sound is off and you hope that I don't say anything uh, too crazy. Or maybe you do hope that I say something crazy. Uh, But I also know that um, not like very few people are doing it. Ask yourself this. When was the last time you received a personalized video message from someone just saying, what's up, asking how your day is going, ask how you cope. It just doesn't happen. Right. And so my goal is to move from being a real estate agent to being someone's friend. Right. And so and then uh, I, I want to push people and challenge people. Because I've said, hey, if you're feeling, you know, if you're feeling uh, f- uh, feisty today, send me a video back. And now I know, here's what I know. I know that when I send Peter a video message, guess what I'm getting back? I'm getting a video message back, right? Uh, and, and I think it's one of those things. And it's just, just the regular message on, on the phone. There is no app, nothing like that. Um, but it puts me in a different space. It takes me from being a, a real estate agent or a professional to, man, this dude right here sent me a video message I, and really there's no threat right so there's no attachment there they don't have to click on the link you you see a thumbnail most of us see the thumbnail on our phone uh, and when you see my beautiful smiling face on your phone you got to see what i'm what i'm going to talk about but one thing i would share peter uh, about a tip for video is thinking about what's the benefit for the viewer right why should they watch the video and why should they continue to watch the video i think many of us do videos because we like them and we feel good and it's what we want to do if you can't sell if you can't clearly elaborate or communicate what the um, value is for the viewer and sean just put value 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 if you can't communicate in a very few number of words what the value is for them to watch or continue to watch or to watch the next time, then don't do the video, right? It's just that easy, right? We have too much stuff coming to us already. The last thing I need is more stuff. Um, the reason why I send personalized one-off videos to 40 or 50 people every day is because I know the value in them is that they see someone cares enough about them to say hello, to say happy Tuesday, happy Wednesday, happy birthday. Um, And then I know, and so by me building that value every single time, when I call them now, they're going to pick up the phone. When I send an email, 
they're going to open the email. When I make a request or, or say, hey, I'm Peter, I need something from you. Peter's like, Psh, this is a dude that sends me videos on a Tuesday just because, even when I'm on vacation, right? So, so that's just something that... Um, <laughs> And look, I might, I might just be finishing a workout and I'll respond. You know, the, the most important thing here, Neil, is that you are maybe one of the most authentic people that I know. And your voice messages not just come through or your videos don't just come through as another, you know, message. You just trying to be in touch. They're just authentic touch bases where you're wishing someone a happy birthday or like you said, a happy Thursday, right? Um, it, it is what it is. And so for me, um, you know, I, I hope that you continue to send them my way because you certainly brighten up my day and your videos on, online should continue. I would say, you know, I don't know if you're still doing them because I've, I've missed them. But when you guys went back and forth um, and you were saying, okay, talk to me about something, it was like a... Um, gosh, what, what were the videos? So, so what, what, what Peter's talking about, so we do a number of different videos, but what I've done, I know that while people love me, they really love my wife and my son, right? And, and so we just do the, the, a quick three questions type video where my wife and I, we get on and we have some fun. Uh, and what that has done for me is it's opened up my reach to people who might not connect with me but they will connect with my wife, right? Or they'll connect with my son. And then they'll say, hold on. So he's not just a real estate agent. He's also a dad. He's also a husband. He's a person who can make fun of himself, right? Because I think a lot of times, you know, we get so caught up in being the star of our show that when I get my wife or my son on, I'm the butt of every joke. And a lot of people will come on and want to see my wife give me a quick jab right? Or my son say something witty and smart so that I can be the villain, right? And, I, and what, I've understand, what I understand is, is that if the value for them is some comic relief or for them to, you know, hopefully have some type of hope, then I will be the villain, you know, knowing that that's going to get them to come back and click and watch again. Absolutely. And, and you're never the butt of the joke. Um, to me, I look at Joanna, she just gives you that look and everything is just magical. So um, please, if, if you've stopped, because I haven't seen them, maybe you're not in my algorithm, I have to go back into it. They're, they're incredible. Um, so what I want to make sure that I, I have time for is to um, just give one of our, our sponsors a quick three minute um, sponsor spotlight. So um, let me see if I can... Um, is Albert on here? Um, Albert Munya from First Third Bank. Oh, wait, Albert, we, we got you already. But give us um, just a quick two minute um, for those of um, for those of uh, of our members that are not, have not heard you speak, please. <clears throat> okay, sure. Well, thank you again for having me, and uh, thank you guys for everything you guys are doing. I think videos are great. Diana did a great job speaking earlier. Um, I enjoyed listening to Neil now. I want to see some of Neil's videos, man, you know? But, I so know. I work at Fifth Third. I'm a mortgage lender there. And I can help you guys with all types of scenarios, 100% doctor loans, no mortgage insurance. Uh, I like to focus on the first time uh, home buyers because we can offer down payment assistance programs. We can do construction of perm loans. We all, we have many types of different loans. And the best part is that you have a seasoned loan officer that can answer your questions and construct your deal and take it to closing. Awesome, Albert. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Um, so we've got six minutes before, um, before we end. I think video could be funny. Video could be informative. Um, it could be embarrassing for you, right? It is, you know, what, what Neil is sharing here is, um, is all about being authentic. What I see with Anthony and Melinda and Chandra and Donna, everyone who's creating all of this incredible video content, it comes as, across as being real. And when you see people that are trying too hard, you can tell right away. Um, some people have asked, what apps are you using? So I know that um, Chandra has been helping out a little bit. Bonbon seems to be one of those apps that I still to this day do not use in my business, but I get the emails from Melinda. I get them from Chandra and Anthony where, you know, I see all of the, um, the videos that you're creating. So for some of you um, that are using it at a high level, um, can you just give us a, a reason why you switched over and how, um, what the success rate is from people getting them and clicking on your, on your videos? 
the conversion for me of, of the open and click rate is definitely much better. I, I don't use them as much like on a one-to-one, -one, but I will now because I took Neil, notes from Neil. I know people do it, but um, I'm going to try doing that more often. But when I was I, I, sending newsletters, it takes so long to type it out, check for typos, do all that stuff, the design versus just throwing in a, a, like a bomb bomb, like little video and sending it out. It's so much qu quicker to prepare. So I do it more often. And then, you know, the it, people are more likely to click and pay attention. That's my feedback. Awesome. Um, Anthony, what about you? So, uh, I, I use it because it's, it, it connects to my system, that and Vidyar. So I use both of them, but it's easy to access. And if I'm a real estate agent, I'm going to utilize both of those platforms because what Melinda is saying here, the analytics, it, if you send it out through the extension, Gmail extension, you're going to see all the analytics on it. And that's because it's tracking the cookies. So that's what's key. If you can see who's actually opening your uh, you know, your videos, that's what Neil's talking about. And just to elaborate on Neil, he's ex like, it's all about the tonality and understanding. We can't say that over the phone sometimes, or we can't say that over a text message. People take things out of context, right? So the video goes a long way because you can see the emotion, you can see the body language, you can feel it. Uh, and send in that via email or by text, the conversion rate's going to go, you know, go up, and that's the concept. And and, and being authentic, like Neil's saying, uh, it's it's crucial, man. I mean, that's that's the concept of why we do it through each milestone process. Granted, we've got some kinks right now in our system, but you know, we're we're all human. We'll we'll get through that. <laughs> hey, that's technology, right? I mean, I oh yeah. Oh my God, tell me about it, brother. <laughs> I tried the internet before I started today. It was working, and then I realized being in the basement was no good with everyone being here. So now I'm in the little corner of the upstairs bedroom. So technology is great when it works. It sucks when it doesn't. But here's one thing that I would love to challenge every single one of you on this particular Zoom chat. I would love for you to go out and send out at least one video, right? For those of you who hate video, do that. If you liked video, send out five videos to someone you haven't really heard from. An easy trick would be go through Facebook. You know that there are a lot of birthdays that are going on. Why don't you just take a quick little video um, and say, hey, Dania, just wanted to wish you a happy birthday. Send it out, you know, and, and see what kind of reaction you get back from your, um, from your people, um, your sphere. I would just challenge you not to brand it. Um, it is going to be really important that you just send out a quick little touch base. It's more authentic and it feels real. I have something to add. Um, I, went, I went to a, a conference this year and they were doing um, a presentation on Facebook in particular. And to use an idea of sending a video to someone on your Facebook, they said that what they do is they look at the agents who have been your biggest fans, or not the agents, the, the people that are your biggest fans, and then personally thank those people. Like, oh, thank you so much for your support. Like I have, like, let's say like three or four people that like every single post. They always see my business page post regardless if I boost it or not, because they're always engaging. So I always make it a point to personally reach out to those people. And how cool would it be, which I've never done this, to send them a video like, hey, you know, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And just wanted to, you know, personally reach out and say thank you. I think that would be a lot more effective than, than the text, you know, it'd be a cool idea. Who doesn't like a raving fan, right? It doesn't matter if they purchased something from you, rented something from you, it does not matter so long as they continue to send you business. Um, those raving fans are really the most important piece of anyone's business. Um, so make sure that you reach out to them, share some love and especially during COVID, just give them some virtual, some virtual love. I, I'm sure they'll appreciate it.